Good morning. Good to see everyone out today. We especially appreciate seeing our visitors. We're glad you're here today. Please continue to pray for those who are continually struggling with, with cancer and other health issues. A list of names to pray for is in our bulletin, so if you would pick up a bulletin, you'll have those. Jerry Hill, a member of Valley View, will be having open heart surgery next week. Please keep him in your prayers. LJ Hogue is in a room at NEA after having a couple of falls this past week. Nothing is broken, but he's being monitored until they can get a physical ther therapy plan in place. So let's continue to pray for LJ. My stepfather, Bob Peel, has been diagnosed with liver cancer. It's advanced and aggressive, and they have given him three weeks to three months. So if you would keep my family, my mother, in your prayers, I'd appreciate it. Congratulations to Bobby and Gina Colburn on the birth of their newest granddaughter. Abigail Renee was born on Thursday. Congratulations. David and Cindy Gibson made it to Romania safely and will be there for a couple of weeks. Please continue to pray for them. Please continue to pray for Mark Vaughn as he continues to recover from an infection. We're in the process of inducting new elders and deacons. Please use the slips in the foyer to give your suggestions and place them in the box. The box will be taken up this Wednesday evening. And this Wednesday evening is going to be our singing night. Just come out for that. We will not split up for classes on Wednesday night. Our senior day Senior Honor Day will be May 15th. We will have a short presentation to recognize them after worship that morning and we'll invite all to stick around to show love for Will Gibson, Tessa Wilson, and Libby Holden. A table's been placed in the foyer for cards and gifts for the three high school seniors. Mark your calendars for our Family and Friends Day on May 22nd. We'll be having fried fish after church. We will also announce any new elders and deacons at that time. Those serving today, Hunter Phillips will be leading our songs. Opening prayer, Bill Ballard. Children's time is Chase Allman. Scripture reading, Jackson Ballard. Lord's Supper is Ron Shelton. And closing prayer is Alan Gossett. It's about this time as we have our opening prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the opportunities you give us in this life. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your son who you sent to this earth, that he lived and died for us, that through him we might have a hope of a home in heaven with you. Dear Lord, at this time we ask that you please be with the leaders of our country, dear Lord, and leaders throughout the world that Ukraine and Russia could come to a peaceful ending. Dear Lord, we ask that you please be with those of our number that are sick, those that are receiving treatments. Dear Lord, we ask that you please be with those that are ministering to them and restore them their much wanted needed health. Dear Lord, we also ask that you please be with those families that are and ministering to those sick people, and dear Lord, just please be with them and comfort them. Dear Lord, we ask that you please be with the speaker of the hour this morning and help him have a ready recollection of the message he wants to present to us. And dear Lord, help us to have an open heart and to apply it to our everyday lives. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your son. Dear Lord, we ask that you please forgive us when we fall short. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus. 
Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Spirit of life who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. From the heavens, praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest. All his angels praise, proclaim. All his hosts together praise. Sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye heaven of heaven, and ye floods above the sky. Let them praise his give Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted. And praises give Jehovah. They were made at his command. Then forever he established his decree shall ever stand from the oath of praise Jehovah. Fifty dragons all, fire and hail and snow and vapors, stormy winds that hear him call. Let them praise his give Jehovah for his name alone. His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. All ye fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains high, Things and beast and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth.
Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day and we're particularly thankful at this time, Father, for uh, this bread that we're about to take, partake of and we pray that our minds might go back to the time when uh, Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us. We pray that as we partake of this today, we'll do so in an acceptable way. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Again, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne thanking you for this day and for this cup which symbolizes to Christians all over the world the blood of Jesus which was shed uh, on Calvary. And again, we ask that uh, we might examine ourselves and as we partake of this, do so in an acceptable way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our elders have set aside this time in our service today to give back a portion of what we've been blessed with. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, again, we come before you thanking you for the day and for all the many blessings of life that are ours to enjoy. And we're thankful, Father, for this time that we have to come together and give back a portion uh, to you of what we have earned. We pray, Father, that these monies collected today might be used wisely and certainly in the furtherance of your kingdom, not only here in our area, but even throughout the world. We ask these blessings in the name of Christ. Amen. Worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilion and splendor, and guerdon with praise. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can 
and recite. It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as prayer, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Children's time. All right. Any kids here today? This is our children's time. They're welcome to come forward if any are unaware. Some of them are bringing money up to put in this bucket. We'll give that money to needy kids in the area as the elders see fit. And this is just a short moment. We love kids here where we can gather them all together to kind of celebrate them and worship with them, say a prayer with them, and have a short time with them. So come on up, any kids. You're good. Good job. Good job, everyone. Great job. Hi, Sadie. <laughs> you sit down? Do you want to sit down? Okay. All right, you guys listen up. Hey, Liza, can you go grab one of those flower pots with me uh, for me? Maybe the purple one or the orange one? You pick. Yeah, can you bring it to me? Purple's fine. Okay, bring it here. Everybody listen, look at this. My girl's got to be the center of attention too. Can I have it? Thank you, Liza. Okay, these aren't real, uh, but they're pretty, right? Now, if they were real, we would have to water them, and they would need some sunshine to grow. Uh, but we're going to talk about weeds today. What would happen to these really pretty flowers if a lot of weeds started to grow in the pot too. Ethan, I saw your hand first. Oh, make them die because they will take up too much water. Is that your answer too? They would take up too much room? Yeah, that's true too, Leon. too much room they might push him out yeah y'all are right these flowers need room to grow they need sunlight and water and weeds can choke them out or they can take away the nutrients that let the flowers grow some weeds are pretty though Sadie likes picking dandelion flowers because they're pretty flowers thank you Ellie uh, but the weeds aren't good and they'll kill the flowers so weeds are bad thoughts they're bad hearts they're bad people Sometimes bad people can hurt good people. So we don't like weeds, and we've got to make sure that as we're Christians, we don't... Them, make them grow That's right. We've got to help flowers grow. We've got to watch out for weeds and be careful. Okay, can you all pray with me? Yes, thank you, Liza. Can you bow your heads? Hold your hands. Can you pray with me? Say, Dear God, thank you for your church. And the beautiful people in it. Please help us. Watch out for the weeds. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus loves me this side of. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me.
tells me so. This will be the psalm before the scripture reading. If it's convenient for you, I ask you to stand. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Savior and happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Scripture reading this morning will come from Matthew 13, 47 through 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Good morning, church. Good morning. Wonderful day to worship God, wonderful day to be a Christian. And I'm so blessed that you decided to come together here at the Church of Grace Point and worship with us. Members and visitors alike, I'm so touched by your presence here. So glad that you've chosen to be a part of not a perfect church, but a pretty loving one, if I have anything to say about it at least. Uh, but today we're talking about refining the church. So get ready. I don't know if it'll make you uncomfortable or not if you need to be refined. Uh, but that's what we'll see. Turn to Matthew 13. We'll be there shortly. And as you turn there, remember, this is our last week to submit names for elders and deacons. Put those in before Wednesday. We'll collect that box and the elders will review those men submitted. So pray for those. And if you have any questions about the kinds of men expected to leave the church, please uh, ask me. I'd love to tell you about it. And then come back on Wednesday, our singing night, where our young men and our men of the congregation will lead us in worship. Always look forward to that. Always a special time, so come back for that as well. Uh, but this morning for our lesson, we turn uh, and look at a few of Jesus' parables about refining the church 
Uh, not necessarily dividing the church or splitting the church, but pulling apart the bad from among the good. Selectively choosing the good from the bad and blessing and destroying those as Jesus sees fit. So as we look at ourselves and wonder if we need to be refined, uh, we need to examine Jesus' parables very closely. But as we get into these, I want to preface the lesson by saying, we are not the judge. We are not the ones to condemn others and to sanctify some, to lift others up while pushing others down. Remember your need for grace. Remember your need for mercy and the love of Jesus. Remember you're a sinner just like the rest of us. And focus first on your heart and your homes, and then we can begin to share the gospel with others once we purify ourselves. So start with yourselves, and maybe this lesson can apply to you and your home, and then we can look outwardly only as Jesus permits us to do so. So as we see from these two parables, they're uh, in the middle of several parables told by Jesus about the kingdom of God. And a lot of them are pretty closely uh, coordinated with each other. They have to do with each other. They relate to one another. But in the middle of telling many parables, he tells two about refining the church, about separating the good from the bad. Jesus tells two short parables, among others, about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom now represented today is us. It's the church. It's the body of the Lord's people to ultimately one day enter into the eternal kingdom. So he's talking about us. He's addressing us. If you call yourself amongst the body of believers, he's talking about you and me. There are many good things about the kingdom. He talks about the, the, the mustard seed and how fast the kingdom is about to grow and how powerful the kingdom is about to be. But Jesus knows the kingdom is going to be made up of people and people like you and me aren't perfect people. So sometimes there's going to be some problems. Sometimes there are going to be those among the church that, that are bad, that maybe don't belong and maybe are choking out the life of the church, just like these beautiful flowers can be destroyed by weeds. These are impervious. These are special. Are you someone who has a heart for God and who loves God? That's the question that we need to understand because Jesus tells two parables about the outcome or, or the uh, path for those who are good and the path for those who are bad. And you do not want to be one who is cast aside and, can, and considered as bad. There's going to be problems. There's, uh, no one is going to be perfect. Sometimes there's going to be bad people. So Jesus tells us two parables uh, to tell us how he deals with those who are bad and how we are expected to cooperate and live among those who maybe by Jesus' standards, not our own, are considered to be bad. So let's look at these two parables. First, the one that we began with, with our scripture reading, the parable of the drag net. We'll reread it again, but keep in mind the ultimate goal of selectivity of Jesus here, of refining the church and of making it a better place, not full of perfect people, but those with a heart for God. So we'll read it again, and then we'll see the parable of the weeds after this one. But first, the parable of the dragnet. Matthew 13, 47 through 50 says, The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them, the evil, into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Applying this parable or this analogy or this illustration of Jesus is very simple. This one is not clouded very much, although the parables were never really a direct revelation of the truth. Jesus wants you to search for the truth, to seek out the meaning in his teachings. This one's pretty simple. There's good people and bad people, and at the, at the end, the good people are going to be blessed, and the bad ones are going to be destroyed. But it's the process now that we have to deal with, because we're not at judgment day yet. We've got to live in the meantime before Judgment Day comes. So what do we do as fish in the sea, surrounded by good and bad fish? How do we live in the sea that we find ourselves in? How do we cooperate and live among the others? Well, let's see if we can learn a little bit 
about uh, ourselves from this parable. First, to understand the parable of the dragnet, uh, you've got to not think about the type of fishing that you and I likely do as casual fishermen. Damon said, I've never caught a bad fish. Every fish I catch is a good fish. I told him, well, I'm not a good fisherman, so I don't catch very good, much fish. But we don't, uh, here in the parable, the men aren't fishing with a rod and pole, uh, with, with a single line, a single lure. They would get a couple boats together and drag a net through the water. A net is indiscriminate. It catches anything and everything in its way. So a part of that process, uh, catching everything, means that after you're done, you would have to go through your catch. And that's what we see. And they would pull these nets first into their boats, and then once they filled their boat up, they would take it to shore and go through a refining process, clearing out the nets, maybe uh, repairing them, and then going out to catch more fish again. Today, dragnet fishing is still done. And with the advances in technology and just the methodology of doing it for so long, our fishermen are, tend to be more selective. We know the seasons to catch the right fish. We know the places, the breeding grounds, the spawning grounds. But still, using a dragnet today, the dragnet is indiscriminate. It catches anything that is in that place at that time. It catches it all. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's in the net, it's going to catch it. And that's... That's a lesson that we may miss in this parable about our evangelism. A lot of us evangelize with a single rod and a single lure. We're picky. We only want to catch people that we're comfortable with. People that look like us, that sound like us, that dress like us, that are involved with us. We're very picky and selective about who we think is worthy enough to come into our church. We may not say that out loud, but that's the unstated truth in being selective in your evangelism. Don't pick just the people like you to come to the church. Hey, save anybody. Save them all. So if you have to go one at a time, that's fine, but don't be selective. Don't only pick people like you because you rob yourself not only of a better evangelism in your own life, but you rob the church of those souls out there that you may have been the one to save, but you were too picky. You were too selective, and those weren't good enough people to be involved in your church. So don't be picky. Be like a dragnet. Be indiscriminate. The gospel is for everyone. Everyone should have the opportunity to obey the gospel, and you should be one to share the gospel with everyone. Just try and catch everyone you can. That's your job as an evangelist, as someone sharing the gospel. Try and catch them all. Try and bring them into the church with a dragnet. And that's a team of people. There's so many lessons in this illustration. It's not just you using a dragnet. That's really hard to do. It's possible if you sling it out and draw it back in, but it's a lot of hard work. Grab several boats. Grab several crews and pull as many people as you can into the church. Be indiscriminate. The gospel is for all. Uh, verse 47, the fishermen in the parable gather fish of every kind. Everyone should have the chance to accept Christ, not just those that you deem as worthy. The only reason a person is not saved should only be that they have chosen not to be saved. They have removed themselves from the church. It should not be that they haven't been given the opportunity because we are too selective. It should be their choice to abandon the church, uh, not our choice to never invite them to it. So accept everybody. Fish with a dragnet. Reach out to men with a dragnet. Pull them all in. But then, after the fishing is done, this is where we begin to see Jesus implying that there's a selective process that there's an elimination process. After the fishing is done and you pull the nets onto the shore, you dump out your catch for the day, there comes a time for selectivity. Some fish are just no good. And what does a bad fish look like? I don't know. Ask a professional fisherman. Maybe it's too small. Uh, maybe it's diseased. Uh, some, some days, uh, fishermen catch sharks. You don't want that. You throw it back. Catch a jellyfish or a stingray. That's no good. Catch a turtle. Throw that back. There are just some catches that are not good for the haul. And after everything is caught, there's a process of being selective. And you can see this today. We still do this today. You throw the bad back out into the water. You keep the good. Whatever the good is according to the judgment of the fishermen. Now what we can wrongly do 
is assume in this parable that we are the ones doing the selecting. We can wrongly assume that the authority to cast aside bad fish and to accept good fish is our authority. That's not correct. In this parable, you're a fish. You and I aren't anything spectacular in this analogy. You're in the net with everybody else. So who are you, a fish in the net, to look aside to your brother, another fish in the net, and say they don't belong here? You're just another fish. You're not, in this parable, the fisherman who does the selecting. And in any illustration, the authority to condemn is never given to man. For some reason, we take that authority. For some reason, we think we can take that authority, and we try to take it. We never have it. But for some reason, we treat people with condemnation in our hearts. We say, you're not good enough. You're not special enough. Uh, You don't have the right scales. You don't look right. That power is not ours. We're not the ones doing the selecting. It's up to the fishermen. And Jesus goes on to expound. The angels bring the souls in, and God, the Son, and the Spirit divide them out. It's not our job. But what happens? Some, in verse 39, are just evil fish. They are unjust. Now these, clearly through other teachings of Jesus, are the hypocrites in the church. They are the worldly Christians in the church, the disinterested Christians, and the dropouts, to name just a few. There are many categories of bad fish. It's not as if we're not revealed the truth of who is good and who is bad. But essentially, for us to apply it today, it is those who love Christ and those who do not. That's what makes a fish good or bad today. For a fisherman, the fish are inherently good or bad because of the type of fish they are or the things that have happened to them in their day-to-day fishly lives. For us to be bad is a choice. We say, I do not want God, I do not want Jesus, I do not want to be in this net. I want to swim with the sharks. I want to swim with the other diseased, rejected fish of my kind. I don't want to be saved. That's the only reason a fish is bad. And transversely, the only reason a fish is good for us today is because they have Jesus. You're not good enough without Him. You're not a big, fat enough fish. You're not special enough. You're not talented enough. If you don't have Jesus, you're rejected. If you have Jesus, you're selected. So don't think too mighty of yourself. Think humbly. You're just another fish in the net. And your fate is left up to the Master. It's up to Jesus. Choose Him. But very simply, an uncomfortable truth is that some are good and some are bad. God will reject those who are bad, and He will accept those who are good. I don't make that judgment. I try not to make that judgment. God does. And He makes it on Judgment Day. Right now, we're still waiting. We're still waiting to be selected. So now is the time to get in the net. Get yourself caught. Get yourself in Jesus' boat. Get Get yourself on His team. Whatever you have to do to get into Christ is all you have to do to be saved. Be baptized. Be forgiven. Accept Him now before it's too late and before you miss the boat, literally. So some are good and some are bad, but importantly, it is Jesus who does the selecting. We fish cannot judge other fish. We need to monitor ourselves. And then Jesus tells another parable, very similar, the parable of the weeds, or your Bible may say the parable of the tares. Just another name for the type of weed. So let's read that one now in Matthew 13, 24 through 30. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came to him and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? How then does it have weeds? A lot of people use this against Jesus. He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. 
let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, and gather the wheat into my barn. A very similar parable with a very similar lesson. There are good and there are bad, and there is a time for selectivity. So this parable teaches the same lesson, but it includes other uh, uh, truths that the other did not. Now we know where the bad fish and the bad weeds come from. Jesus does not put bad people into his church. Satan does. He says his enemy, the enemy of Jesus is who? It's Satan. Satan comes and sows division. He sows evil. He sows wickedness. He sows pain. He brings some bad people into the church. So the parable emphasizes that the seed and the sower have a lot to do with the situation. And this continues the idea from the beginning of Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. Jesus sows the good seed, which in the parable of the sower is the Word of God, and the pure seed of the Word of God produces good disciples. But according to the parable, when were the bad seeds sown by the enemy? When Jesus' disciples slept... Satan came in and spread evil among the pure seed. Now, slept does not mean fall asleep. It means be caught unaware, not pay attention. When no one paid attention, evil came into the church. You see the application today? If we're not careful, if we're not watching over the garden, if we're not being selective about the truth, because that's the only selectivity that we have, then Satan will come in at any chance we let our guard down and plant evil. He'll do it in you. He'll do it in your home. He'll definitely do it in your church if you let him. That's why we've got to be selective about the truth and about the message that we speak and the seeds that we plant. Are we using what Jesus did to sow good seed, the truth of the Word of God, or are we compromising it and maybe being unaware are sowing bad, evil seeds? It implies that if the disciples had not slept, that this evil thing would not have been done. But because the disciples were human, there are times when we let our guard down. And when that happens and evil comes within the church, what are we to do? Well, the disciples came to the master and they said, what do we do? You didn't sow this evil seed, did you? No, of course not. How do we get rid of them? They don't belong among us. They are judged by you as evil, by ba as bad. What do we do? Well, Jesus says, the Master says, don't do anything about it right now. You are not good enough at dividing the Word of God to choose who is good and who is bad. These tares looked exactly as they were growing as the wheat that they grew amongst. If this was Darnell, if this was the weed that tares refers to, it looked exactly like wheat as it began to grow, and it was poisonous to the consumer. It would cause you to get dizzy, it would cause you to lose control, it would hurt you. This is not a good thing to be in the field if it is the field to be harvested. But we can't divide the truth ourselves. So Jesus says, leave them alone, let them grow, and at the end you will know them by their fruits. Darnell or tares are blacker than wheat. They look different. You will know them at the harvest time, and you are able to separate them. Now in the... Uh, analogy, Jesus explains this parable. He says it's the angels that do the division. So even at harvest day, the judgment is not up to us. The selectivity is not ours. We cannot ever say to another person, you don't belong here. Because in the last illustration, we were fish. In this one, we're grass. We're wheat. And we, as a plant, cannot say to another plant, you don't belong here. We're in the field, hoping to be harvested, hoping to be set aside in the good pile and not in the bad pile to be burned. We cannot pronounce condemnation or judgment. We can evaluate. We can discern. Is this harmful? Is this person harmful? Or are they good? Or are their teachings good? But saying, you don't deserve heaven, is not ours to say. That's up to God. Unfortunately, there are going to be bad people. Just as there were bad fish caught in the dragnet, now because of the work of Satan, there are bad weeds growing among the wheat. There are tares. And it takes a professional to know the difference between wheat and tares. It takes God to know the difference between a genuine Christian and a disingenuine one, a, a bad Christian. Uh, I've been fooled. 
by bad Christians before. I thought they were good men, good women, and then their fruits revealed the true nature of themselves. Turns out I was wrong. I misjudged them. There were some bad people that turned out to be good that I thought surely were harmful to the church. Turns out they were saving more people than I ever knew about behind the scenes. We're not good at judging people. God is. God is the one who is going to do the selecting. We have to wait. We have to grow. We have to make sure that we maintain the purity of our fields, of our hearts, of our homes, and of our church. But God is the one who will do the selecting to set aside the good to be blessed and to set aside the bad to be destroyed. The bad weeds were put into a pile to be burned. The bad fish were thrown into a furnace. And that place will be gnashing of teeth, screaming, terror, pain. He's talking about hell. Not just a bad life on this earth. Eternity separated from God. That's what awaits bad fish and tares. Weeds. But for the good, salvation. Heaven. It's a good story. It's not a bad story. We just have to be careful not to give ourselves the judgment that we do not deserve. To give ourselves the authority to pronounce condemnation that we might be pronouncing upon ourselves. Jesus is the expert. He is the one who truly knows your hearts. And this, again, is good news. You don't have to be the voice of destruction. You don't have to be the one tearing up the weeds. There have been a lot of good-intentioned Christians thinking they're pulling the weeds out of the church, and what does Jesus say they're going to do? They're going to pull out some of the good with the bad. How many good people have been hurt by other good people? Too many. Don't pull the weeds. That's up to Jesus. That's up to the harvesters. That's up to the angels. They're the ones who are going to rightly divide the good from the bad. All you've got to make sure is that you're one of the good ones. And the only thing that makes you a good fish, the only thing that makes you good wheat to bear good fruit, is your relationship with Jesus. Have you been saved by Him? Have you accepted Him? And do you follow Him? Because at any time... Whenever your guard is down, Satan can come and sow evil and sow division. And you might be the weed choking out the church. You might be the bad fish that's going to get thrown aside. If you believe it can't ever happen to you, think again. If a man thinks he stands, you might fall. You might be heaping destruction upon yourself. Just choose Jesus and you will be chosen by Him. In the meantime, just wait. Wait, and as much as you can, live in harmony with those around you. Part of what makes being a Christian, being a member of the Lord's church, a beautiful thing is our ability, given to us by the grace of God, to love those who do not love us. The world loves judging the church because of the hypocrites in the church. For some reason, the hypocrites in the world are fine. The world is filled with hypocrites, likely more hypocrites than the church has, but ours are especially bad, and it's who we're judged by. But they're not wrong. <laughs> hypocrites don't belong in the church. Pharisa pharisaical ideas don't belong in the church. Judgment and hatred and evil don't belong in the church. And it only comes in because you or I bring it in. God didn't sow division. He didn't sow evil. He didn't plant bad seed. That's you. That's me. That's Satan. So all we have to do is love others. Love the good fish. Love the bad fish. Love the wheat and love the tares. They may fool you. You may be loving a bad person, but what harm is that? <laughs> you may be loving a good person, and that's beautiful. So leave the judgment to God and just love everybody else. And first and foremost, make sure that you maintain your own purity above everything else. If you're already in the net, you're saved. You've been caught. You've been brought in. And as the boat is making its way back to land for judgment day to come, Make sure you stay with Jesus. Make sure you choose Him each and every day. 
all we have to do is go about our business of preaching the Word, the word embodying Christ, sharing His love, sharing His message of love. Don't kick anybody out of the net. Don't try and pull anyone out of the field. You might be pulling up a good person and you don't even know it. You and I can't discern truly who is good and who is bad. Guard yourselves. Guard your hearts. Guard your home. Guard the church. That's what the elders do. That's what the deacons do. But make sure you have a good, strong relationship with Jesus and share Him with others. That is what we need to learn from this lesson from these parables of the dragnet and of the weed or weeds or the tares, choosing Jesus is what we always need to do. And that's the invitation and the opportunity that you have today. You get to choose Jesus today and every day. The invitation is always offered, whether it's prayers of a good-intentioned Christian who maybe has allowed too much evil into his or her heart that needs the prayers of restoration of the church to drag them back into their relationship with Jesus, or... If you're a bad fish, you can now be saved. You can be baptized and you can be made pure and made good by the blood of Jesus. If you need the prayers of the church or if you need to be baptized, if there's anything, please come while we stand and sing to encourage you. Let us haste, so oh, haste to its spring. Tis the fount of love from the source above. And he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. There's a living stream with a crystal From the throne of life now it flows. While the waters roll, let the weary soul hear the call that forth freely goes. Will you come to the fountain? for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call, tis a fountain open for all. There's a rock that's cleft and no soul is left that may not its pure Tis for you and me, and its stream I see. Let us hasten joyfully then. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you. So hear the welcome call, tis a fountain open for all. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not 
not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Again, good to see everybody out this morning. Good to see the visitors, new faces, old faces, old friends. Let's bow in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day that you've given to us to come and worship you. Lord, as always, thank you for the freedom that we have to come and worship you. Lord, I pray that our worship this morning has been pleasant to your ears. I pray that the lesson given this morning may open our heart, and may prick the hearts of some. Lord, I pray that you continue to be with this congregation. Lord, that we have the love for each other that we do have here. Lord, I pray that you be with the children up here this morning. What a beautiful crew. Lord, be with the parents and grandparents of these children that they continue to raise them in your footsteps. Lord, I pray that you be with the elders of the congregation. I pray that you be with us as we look at the, the names in the boxes to see, to determine who is well enough to be deacon or elder coming up. Lord, I pray that you be with all of our members here, that you keep them safe, be with those that were unable to be with us this morning. Lord, thank you for our guests here. As most always, Lord, thank you for your son and the gift given to us. Lord, be with us as we leave here and be, that we may be safe. And it's in Jesus' blessed name we do pray. Amen. Amen.